So 600 years before Jesus, they get split. One group of the elite class of the Mayans, they went all over the north. And the second group, they went all over the south, trying to find the end of this square planet. But how far these people walk? The first group reached Anchorage. You know what is it? Alaska. Alaska. And the second group, they reached Patagonia. You went to Alaska? Oh, that's very cold. <laughs> they told me. So the other group, they went all over the south. And where is the south? Patagonia. So they reached the Arctic. But Mayans, they never have seen snow before. They thought this place is very cold. There is no sacred animals around here. No jaguars, no eagles, no snakes, and no honeybees. And no honeybee is pretty dangerous. That means no pollinization. No so they thought this must be the end of the world. Let's go back to the center. And the center is named today Peninsula de Yucatan. So in the 1968, the National Geographic tells us Mexicanos, we don't know how this is possible. But using the Hubble technology, Hubble scanner, we drive the line from Anchorage to Patagonia. And guess what? That's 100% the central latitude. So really? we thought, oh, yeah. I guess we're shorties. Eh? Shorties and sexy. So they count their steps, maybe. <laughs> Impossible. So the according to NASA, there is only one way Maya knew this. Tracking the sun, tracking the moon, and tracking Venus. Yeah. So the according to NASA, Mayans most know which is the orientation of the equator line. And they discovered one special day in America continent named May 20. On the May 20 only, uh, to make it easier for me, please. To make it much, much easier for me. On the May 20, this is the equator line, okay? So on the May 20, I'm pointing you the east. <laughs> Something magic happens. Only on the May 20. On the May 20, the sunrise become right there at the beginning of the equator line. 5.36 a.m. in the morning. So the journey of the sun, it takes 180 degrees to reach the sunset, okay? So 5.36 p.m., 12 hours later, the sun will be 10, sorry, 1,000 miles away from Giza. Do you know what is Giza? Yes. Egypt. Egypt. So 12 o'clock, the sun is lined up 90 degrees on top of the pyramid. And when the sun gets lined up 90 degrees on top of ourselves, you know what happens? There is no shade around yourself. No shadow at all. So Maya low class people, because they got no knowledge, they get on panic. Hey, King, Senor, where is my soul? Evil gods eat it. Yes, we know. What are we gonna do? Don't worry about it. We're gonna kill someone. And they did. And they accurate how many days it takes the sun to reach the same location and make my shade disappear. And they find out that it takes 365 days. So they discover the time. So in honor of time, they built, instead of one, they built three cities. This is the city of their gods. 800 meters to the north, to the south, sorry. There is another city and that's the city of royalty. 1,600 meters, there is a third city and it's the city of the low class and medium class people. So in alineation, just copying the orientation of Orion, they make three cities in one. So this city is the city of our God, and no one lives here. There is no evidence of residence. They surround the city with a stone wall, and behind the wall, upper class, medium class, and low class people together, they live on a perfect harmony. So who lives here? Nobody. It was a place for worship, spirituality, energy, commerce, trade, and of course, sports and human sacrifices, but they never live here. So Familia, let me give you the warmest welcome to the center of the universe. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Be proud. One of you is going to be sacrificed. Uh -oh. <laughs> Only one. Only one. <laughs> Sacrifice. <laughs> Come on.
Question? It wasn't me, sir. I believe me, it wasn't me. What do you say about uh, ancient aliens in your pyramid? <laughs> you gave me the video, eh? Come on, I need your answer. Anthropological and archaeological way, my answer it says it's impossible. Okay. All what you guys are watching here is made by the hand of a very, very high advanced civilization. It's what I get from school. But if you want me something that I get from here, yeah. because I born here, yes, that's what okay? I'm... I have seen UFOs here. Oh yeah? I, I am 41 years old. So do I you? I have seen UFOs. Uh -huh. And there is a video on YouTube, the one you can do it if you want on yeah. YouTube. With that temple on an overcast, on an overcast day, crowded with clouds. Yeah. And light getting out from that temple all yeah. the way straight ahead for about 14 minutes. How old are you when you see the UFO? I was, the first time I see a UFO, I was like 10 years old. And my, my, my sister shows me. And the second time I saw one, I was 21, and I see actually five of them, same day. It was during a, in a beautiful night, we were sleeping over there on the grass, in that section. And I have seen three of them perfectly aligned, but I know constellations. I know Orion's constellation. So it looks like Orion, but Orion is a man underneath with a belt. So this is the belt of Orion, and they got a knife right here. And the knife was missing, so I know that's not, that's not Orion. And suddenly, like 2 a.m. in the morning, all three go down and then... Oh. 21, I wasn't drunk. 21, thank you. Thank you, Rodrigo. I've never used drugs in my life. So okay. I have seen UFOs. Thank you. Familia, beautiful people. We get here to this amazing place. Very good. And there is the temple of Kukulkan. And as a matter of a welcome, I want to take you right there to the center. And I want to make you clap. And you may wonder why, Rodrigo, nobody's clapping. Are you crazy? Hold down. I'm Maya. They are now. Okay? So what I'm going to show you is something that I get here with the Mayan people, with the Mayan family. I want to take you right there to the center because Mayans, we believe.
conquistadors, they removed them and they used the rocks to build spectacular houses and churches. There is in a small village 45 minutes away from here named the city of Valladolid. Have you seen it on the way here? Colorful, with a beautiful cathedral. So these conquistadors were looking for gold. They were looking for El Dorado. Yeah, gold. So they removed the bricks trying to get some gold. There wasn't gold around here. They removed the bricks of the floor. No gold here. So they used the rocks to build that amazing city in name of the Queen Isabella Catolica de Fe. So in the 1840s, when the Carnegie Institution tried to fix it, they find out they got missing stones. So Mexico, we have to keep it real. There is more, more rocks. Okay, perfect. But we're going to choose the west and the north facade because the snake heads are facing that place. So that must be the, the important facade. Okay, let's do that. But today, this Españoles give us a present, the name of our temple, because España because Spain wants is El Castillo de Cuculcán. Do you know what Castillo means? No? They name it the Castle of Cuculcán because inside chambers it's hollow. So they thought the king and the queen, they must live inside chambers. But I tell you already, there is another two cities, so no one lives here. So it's not a castle. So today, using my Mayan technology iPad, <laughs> I will explain you that what we got here is not a castle. What we got here is a calendar, and I will teach you how to read it on a moment. This is what you guys are watching. It's perfectly square, okay? Surface level. But you remember what happens when we move from that point to that point and everything's get cricket? So it's the same if you can go all over the top. It does not matter which corner you choose. When you get on the top, it's twisted. So instead to get a square shape, what you get is a rumble. Instead to get a cross-shaped staircase, it's an X-shaped staircase. And the X, you remember what it means? Male symbol of energy. You remember that? So okay, Rodrigo, so why they twist it? They twist it so they can show us one, two, three, four. Four sunrises on four different seasons. Every 91 days, the sun's upgrade 45 degrees. You got it? And 45 times 4 is 360 degrees. So that's the perfect rotation of the planet Earth around the sun. You got my idea? So they find out the seasons of the year, four of them. So that's why they twist it. But at the same time, they twist it to show us the agriculture time. How they know. Because they worship only this one and this season. We got four seasons, but we worship only two. And the first season is named in English, spring, March 21st. In Latin, equinox. In Maya, no, in Latin, that it means equal to the night, like a woman. Hold on. The second season is September 22nd. You guys call in English fall, in Latin, saltis, in Maya a la can. that it means like a day, like a man. So let's listen together. In la ketch a la can. equal to the night, like a day, equal to the women, like a man, a sacred message of equality again. So the reason to choose these two instead of the other two is because the rain. September 22nd is the beginning of the raining season. So that's the best time to plant the seed. So they can harvest the best fruits 182 days later at the beginning of the spring when everything's getting hot. You got my idea? So they know that every March 21st and September 22nd, sunrise become here at the bottom corner angle, 5.36 a.m. in the morning, and the sunrise happened in that location over there, in the bottom corner angle. So during two days, they use this beautiful temple as a sundial because the sun will be here, 5.36 a.m. and the sunset will come here, 5.36 p.m. So the sunset will come in that corner angle over here. You got it? 12 hour journey of the sun. Come on, Rodrigo. That's the equinox. No, 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 no. Sun rays and sunset. Equinox happen one hour before the sunset. When the sun is lined up here, 45 degrees, on the second higher angle, 5.36, sorry, 4.36 p.m. 
So when the sun is 45 degrees, we'll be on top of the clouds over there. And the sunlight will be crashing on the clapping facade. But the south facade, this one here, is gonna get covered by darkness. So one section, two sections of the pyramid gets covered by light and two sections by shade. And this is the equinox. If you stand up yourself right here on the corner, on that corner over there, and you do this, 50% of your body is get covered by sunlight and the other one by shade, and that's the equinox. But the Chinese name it Jing Yang. Jing Yang. You got me? The excess of light coming from the west, it will be coming through the open air. And when the light is coming through, they will be crashing on the staircase, showing us one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. He saw the jungles of light slithering down from the sky like a beautiful snake. It takes 60 minutes to show the snake, but only seven and when minutes to disappear. And we need to clap and then the sound gets like a monkey. You wanna clap again? And then they became a I will monkey. take you another place to clap. I promise. <laughs> so seven seven minutes to disappear. 537, the first triangle at the bottom dismissed like magic in one minute, 60 seconds. Disappears like magic in the mouth of a snake. The one is facing the north. And according to Maya mythology, they got no longer than 52 years to build the full thing. So be ready for this. 45,000 people, 300 years before Jesus. A stone age tools, shorties and sexies. Come on, that's impossible they can make this comfortable. So oh. this temple behind me is not the first one. Be ready for this. It's the second one. Oh, wow. 300 years before Jesus, they tried. They are great. The earth is flat. How many degrees we need? 45. Okay, 17 meters will be fine. So the first temple of Kukulkan was only 17 meters high. They wait 52 years for the snake and the snake never show up. Never. They fail. So you know what happens when Mayans fail? Someone's died. You know that? Someone. So they execute ar architectures, engineers, oh. and the elite class event of Chichen Itza because they fail. We promise we're going to come back with more knowledge. I think the writings is wrong. They don't bring more knowledge. They bring more people. That's different. The working classes stay, and they keep them working for another thousand years. So the beginning of 700s, 1,000 years later, a new bloodline of Maya people arrived here. We are the Mayas. Our ancestors were Mayas, and they gone. We're a new people, and our name is Itzai. That is, means witch, water, magician. Okay? But you guys change your names, because we mix, because we clash with another tribe. We mix with other tribes like Totecas and Totihuacanos to get more people because we want to make this temple come through and we know 45,000 people is not enough. Okay? And how you guys made it? They understand the rhythm. Equal to the night like a day is a message, a sacred message. So they know this. So since 2008, no one can climb and that's very good. Believe me, that's very good. Preservation preservation so in 2009 no more parade we used to have like a it's not like it's not an electronic festival music festival but a bunch of people like an electronic music festival 55,000 people all over here oh, wow. around the temple clapping pew, 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 pew. <laughs> magic energy but UNESCO says no more no more parade now it's going to be open till 5 p.m. and only Mayans can be here. So that's how I get these pictures. This is the magic moment I'm talking about you. This is 5.36 p.m. and there is a beautiful snake slithering down. Oh, and this snake is made of light. Nice. But this snake I'm showing what, you. What time is that? 5.36. A.M. P.M. P.M. It's the sunset, remember. So can you see the snake head right here on the bottom? The king's door I'm talking about? Pay attention to the shade of this snake because the shadow of the snake is lined up 45 degrees. You got it? This is the boy. 
How long have you been in Mexico? Just a couple of days. Just a couple of days? Yeah. Because on the last March 21st, I don't know if you have seen this in the United States, we got an amazing and beautiful building. Yeah. Have you? Yeah, two weeks. It was here? Yeah. It was so beautiful and so amazing. Believe me. So we know, my friends, that every four years is not one snake. It's two snakes. Different time. Four hours after the sunset, 9.36, when the full moon is rising on the east section, we get in a second snake, and this snake is different. It's different because the body is more delicate and stylized and thin. You got it? Yeah. And the snake head is smaller, but the shadow of this snake is not a straight 45. No, no, no. The shade of this snake is way being like an ocean. And if you're wondering why, it's because the moon attraction to the ocean. Did you know every full moon night we get high tide and low tide, yeah. high tide and low tide? So this is what it is. This is the cycle of 28 days. The fertility cycle every 28 days, fertility period become with a bleeding. And Maya associate with the snake because every 28 days, rattlesnake change the skin. The power of resilience, the power of fertility, and the power of attraction of emotion. So a snake don't mean bad luck. It means fertility, emotions, and resonance. You got it? Mm -hmm. So familiar. This snake wasn't enough to make a Mexico one of the wonders. Believe me, it wasn't enough. In the 2003, the National Geographic tell us Mexicanos, there is a contest coming named one of the wonders, and we want Mexico at the top number one. Okay? That's Quetzalcoatl's snake. That's the snake. So my friends, they tell us, what about Mexico? If we could scan the inside pyramid, the little one. What about if we can bring NASA technology to Mexico? Expensive cameras, thermodynamical cameras, electromagnetism cameras, temperature cameras. Bring the GoPro. And we can scan. Ah, that's all we got, okay? Let me show you the camera. By the way, don't ask me how I get this picture, okay? A Canadian engineer will be in charge of this magic camera. It takes one year and a half. One year and a half. Scanning and scanning, inside and outside, all chambers, and 400 meters out in an inside field. And when those guys, National Geographic, find out, it's what it makes us today one of the wonders of the world. Mm -hmm. And be ready for this because it's going to be big. I mean, it's going to be huge. So the clap is not enough to make a wonder. No, no, no. And the sun rays and the sunset is not enough. The twisting pyramid is not enough. The calendar is not enough. Two pyramids in one, not enough. What it makes enough this dream is the other four temples they discovered. Oh, wow. They discovered another four pyramids and they call them foundations. And four pyramids underneath, underground, holding these big ones over here. So this accurate. elevation isn't real, isn't natural. This temple is elevated on the surface four and a half meters. It's not touching the surface. It's been elevated, suspended on air, and it's been holding oh, wow. like the four turtles are holding the universe. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Under yeah, under, under. So we are standing, if we stand there, we are standing on one. And the big archaeological question next is why? Why they elevate our pyramids? The reason is because as archaeological, anthropological and geological coincidence underneath is water. Underneath there is a sink. So they built a pyramid on top of a cenote? Yes. Why they do that? Because that's the sun location. This is a coincidence. So if they move the pyramid, when the suns get lined up, shade won't be there. And they use the water too. Because that sound you are hearing is not your clap. You remember? Blue, 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 blue. So they are using the sound of the water through the vibration. Yes. Oh, wow. 
2005, they became the excavation, so everybody will be witness of this. So everybody will be, this is real, there is temples on the 2006, they show us electromagnetic three-dimensional pictures. And if you're wondering how accurate is this, let me show you this picture from 2013. Guillermo de Anda reached Holdun. That looks like the Pelican Eye. And he reached the bottom of this sinkhole, and they find one remain, only one remain, mm -hmm. human remain, female remain. Oh, that's the one. One hundred years old remain, natural history. Oh. Take a look at this picture, please. Spend a couple of seconds watching this picture. I will explain you. There is a cave on the left section of the picture with one skull. There is remains at the center. I'm talking about the thorax, coccyx, and arms. On the left side of the picture, there is the two legs, completely, all of them. There is four jars of clay. You got it? In a bunch of white stones at the bottom of the water. On the picture, the rocks, they look very tiny. And that picture is only 10 square meters under submarine account. Okay? So familiar. The radio of that sea floor is 25 meters. So that's about 100 square meters. So what we got there is only 5% of the sea floor. Wow. So they tell us, there is 2,054 kilos of gold. Oh, really? 800 kilos of silver, turquoise offering. Ah, come on, we got no turquoise here in Mexico. Of course. We get it from California. <laughs> Lapis lazuli from Alaska in Canada. Fire opals from Bolivia. Obsidian and jade. With clay. Semi-precious offering. Okay, that woman must be Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> so important, right? Mm. So it's not proven yet. But Mexicanos, we believe she was. 36 p.m. And the moon will be rising right here on the east. So the moonlight will be crashing on the east facade, get covered by moonlight, and the north facade around is gonna get covered by darkness. You got it? So in between the angles, moonlight must come through. Can you see behind the nice that is only the blue sky? Yeah. Inside the angle, you can see the blue sky? Yeah. Okay. Let's make two lines. One line of people here. And another one next. A little closer to my friend. Muy bien. Perfect. So I know already the sunrise on the east. So there is the north. Behind the nine steps, again, I repeat you, is only the blue sky. One, two, follow me. One, two, three, four, and five. Four stop. And five. When you get five, it's stop. Five. Can you see behind the nine steps the little triangles in between? Yeah. And half of the snake head? Yeah. One more step, please. Now we got the full snake. Seven triangles and the rattlesnake head. So when you get here, this is a good spot to be back backwards. And the snake disappeared on your camera. So this is the equinox illusion. And then you go backwards again and the snake shows up. This is the place. No. 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 No.
Yeah. If I try to do that over there, it's not working. It works only on this area. Maybe because this is special culture tree. We don't know. Maybe the location. Maybe, maybe, maybe because these trees are very easy. We don't know. But it's working. Oh, yeah? Over there. Oh, down. There is another echo. There is one yeah, over there. Yeah, one here. There is one over there. Over there. It's very loud here. And it's almost half a mile inside. Yeah. So his voice was very loud. Very really loud. Who wants to die today? Can you see that wall over there? Believe me, no one or two. There will be a couple of hundreds of children waiting for that ad. I want to. All of them slaves. All of them between 13 to 17 year old. And all of them will be ready to run. That place over there. 900. The first children to get there, I made it! I made it, I'm glad to run. I am 15 year old, I'm a slave, I'm, I'm, I'm the fastest guy on the village, okay? Okay, sir, show you. Immediately, maybe you hear this in Oaxaca, peyote. You heard about peyote, a mushroom with sesame. Maybe ayahuasca from Bolivia and Paraguay, or Ranatur, or DMT from the Pueblo. That's the favorite drug of Maya, DMT. This is the plan. So instead to kill 10,000 soldiers, we're gonna kill the boss and the leader. And the winner leader takes everything and the loser gets executed by decapitation. That's how we do it. So there will be 14 players only, seven against seven, one team of seven players. You see the high level over there? That's the running area of the king. So his enemy king will be facing and running high level in the other section. There will be six players by the umbrella, blue umbrella, and 100 meters away, there will be another six players on the ground. Ground players, they will be named royalty players, but they are not kings, okay? So they must be holding a racket to kick the ball because the ball was heavy as pounds. I'm talking about pounds. There was seven and a half pounds, solid rubber, solid couch. So using the racket, they kick the ball as high they can. I alive. And the other six players will be waiting the ball, like volleyball, but they cannot use the hand. When the ball crash and bounce, and the ball gets about this high, the shorty might run, jump, and using the full weight, they kick the ball with their hips. So oh, wow. they bring the ball as a glove to the king. And the king is the only one who will be allowed to use their knees, elbows, or hips to score inside hook. 29 feet. Oh, Seven and a half pounds. Six and a half hours game, one ball on. And if no one can make the ball come through the hoop, no one dies. But if any one of these players make the ball come through the group, only the captain of the loser team is gonna get the right to be executed. And that is the capitation check. Can you see the black stain on the wall? Do you have any idea what it is? Why the rest of the city is not blood of that stone? Oh, that's blood. Because it's blood. Mm. That blood remains, that blood oxidation. 
So the expectator to do, review is tough one. I mean, high quality people, high class. But what about the working class like me? Just in front of the wall, there is a staircase. They climb to the top. And behind the other wall, there is another staircase for royalty. So only the king and queen, they sit in the other section. Okay, Rodrigo? But how they know they execute somebody? This time, I don't going to show pictures. Prepare your camera. You're going to make a picture. Follow me. person here and this guy is holding a butcher knife can you see the knife see if we move a little bit back so everybody can see it a little bit a little bit perfect the movement so everybody can see it okay so that's the guy over there can you see it yeah. wearing a turban in his hand a small person in his nose and a knife in the right hand please go for the next the next guy is kneeling down can you see? Yeah. He's kneeling down. He got feathers on his back like a man eagle. But he got no head. Coming out of his neck, there is a splash, explosion of snakes. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The ball is lined up with a hoop, pointing us the north as the winner team. And please, let me show you the head of the loser. Can you see the face? You see the dripping blood? He's been holded by a soldier, just like this, and he's facing the enemy. You got it? So the enemy must be him, because he got the knife. So he's the winner. There is the loser, and there is the loser's heads right here. Question, how many snakes have you seen? One, two, three, four, five, and six. The seven is broken, here. You got it? Oh, you got it? How many? 